So what's all this fuss with fossil fuel subsidies? Are they the only thing keeping the price of gas even remotely affordable? Or a fruitless waste of money that's propping up unsustainable practices? Is it a necessary aid to keep an important industry chugging? Or the government topping up the coffers of the richest companies in the world? This video will aim to explain some of the arguments surrounding this issue. However, it must first be stressed that fossil fuel subsidies do not exist in a vacuum and are affected by the wealth and politics of the country in which they are found. This video will focus on fossil fuel subsidies within developed nations. Currently, the United States is considering cutting $4 billion of producer-side fossil fuel subsidies, but this plan is coming under fire as an affront to the average citizen who will see their fuel costs rise considerably due to this change. But how true is this exactly? $4 billion sounds like a lot of money, and certainly is in most business, but it is a meager sum in regards to oil. For instance, Eight of the top 12 highest revenue-earning companies in the world work in oil and gas, with combined revenues totaling $2.6 trillion. Now, of course, in terms of strict profits, the number is lower. ExxonMobil, for example, considered the richest company in the world, had a 2011 revenue of $486 billion, but gains were just above 20% of that total, coming away with a profit of $103 billion. Now, this was still enough to make a profit of over $1 million per employee per year. Thus, the entire United States $4 billion subsidy could be matched by just one company's revenue in only three days. This combined with the fact that fuel prices are standardized worldwide, how could the subsidy truly have an effect on pricing? Even if it did have an effect, would this be such a good thing? Such subsidies go against what is considered the holy grail of our capitalist system the market. And fossil fuels are a resource just like anything else. They are not infinite, and by artificially reducing the price, you increase its consumption while negatively impacting the push for innovative alternatives. As we get closer to the peak of our oil reserves, prices will increase. So the question is, what should our response be? Do we drastically increase subsidies to the extent where they can actually keep the price of fuel lower? Or do we invest the money now to find ways to make the switch to alternatives less difficult? The most common argument for keeping the price of fossil fuels low is that it has become so ingrained in day-to-day -day life that to allow it to go up would disproportionately affect the poorest in our society, being unable to afford the corollary increase in the price of basic goods. But the effects of the hike could be blunted by providing direct aid for the purchase of necessary goods, rather than indirectly subsidizing them through fossil fuels just to preserve the status quo. These are a few of the reasons that environmentalists came together at the Rio Plus 20 conference to push for the elimination of fossil fuel subsidies. And, although they were unfortunately rebuffed, this issue will not go away until developed nations see the iceberg ahead and change course. There is, of course, much more to be said on this topic, so stay tuned for subsequent videos in which we will consider it again.